So the theme of the conference is in Sanskrit, Jnanam Vedanta Aikyam Cha. And I want to highlight that many of the points that my colleagues just touched on about the unity underlying diversity according to Vedanta are, are very much present in the Rig Veda. So this famous passage, Ekam Sad Vipra Bahudavadanti, as is, is well known, that uh, the wise call that which is one by many names, Ekam Sat. So the, the one being. Slides are not going, moving there. Uh, in the Nasadiya Sukta, we get a very clear description of the one which is beyond the relative. Uh, and it begins, na sadasi na sadasi tadanim. There was neither non-existence nor existence then. It points out that the unity can't be characterized by either being non-existence as sometimes it is discussed in Buddhism or merely as existence. It's uh, because there's no distinction. If there's, if it's one without a second, ekam adutiyam, then there is no distinction. But that one is described as giving rise to the entire universe. Uh, the next verse explains, anidavatam svadaya tadekam, that one unmoving avata, breathed anit of its own nature. And there is nothing else. Tasmad anyat no para kincha, kinchana asa. There was nothing else beyond that. In, Rig, in, in the third verse of this uh, Nasadiya Sukta, it explains that in the beginning, there was darkness covered by darkness. Everything was an in, indistinguishable ocean. The all pervading one, which was covered by emptiness, was born by the greatness of its heat. <clears throat> Tamahasi tamasa gudham agre apraketam salalam saravam a idam tuchena bhu apahitim yadasit tapasas tan mahina jayata aikam that one was born of its tapas. But the sukta goes on to point out that uh, people have experience of this, saying that the wise sages found out the connection of the existent in the non-existent by searching in their heart. Sato bandhum asati niravindan hridi pratishya kavayo manisha. The sages, the kavis, found it in their hearts. So what does this mean? In uh, 164, Rig Veda 1, 164.37, there's another verse which throws light on this. Navijanami yadivedam asmi, ninya sanadho manasa charami, yadama gan pratamajaratasya adi pacho. Ashnuve bhagam asyaha. It starts out with a, a view where it's unenlightened. I don't know whether I really am this. I move concealed, covered by the mind. But when the firstborn of truth came to me, immediately after that, I attain a portion of this speech. Now, it's a bit obscure, but Sayana uh, comments on this, making it quite clear. He says that in the Brahma Sutra Bhashya, Shankara cites a number of Vedic passages that identify the individual self with totality. Idam sarvam yadayam atma, brahmaiva idam sarvam, atmaiva idam sarvam, and so on. These statements provide intellectual understanding, not experience. 
It's Shastra Janatam Sarvatmyam. Natu Anubhavakam. It's not experiential. The experience is absent because the individual consciousness is restricted by the mind due to the absence of the inward direction of consciousness. Chitta Pratyag Pravanata Bhavena Parichinna Ityarataha Sayana says. Ordinarily, one behaves in the world yoked with distracted consciousness, outwardly directed, engaged in imagination. Bhavana sahishnu na bahir mukhena vikshiptena chetasa yuktaha sancharami sansare. The author of the hymn then laments that he does not experience his self as the totality. Na sarvatyam janami iti paridevate. But when it goes on to the second half of the verse, the firstborn of truth is the initial experience of the supreme truth that is produced by the inward direction of consciousness, Sayana says. So this ritasya means paramartasya parasya brahmanaha, pratamaja means pratamon meshaha, pratama upanishchitta pratyag pravana janato anubhavaha. So that produced by the, the, the experience produced by the inward direction of consciousness. And he explains what is meant by this speech by referring to the Upanishadic passages. Then one obtains that supreme Brahman pervaded by Shabda Brahman, that is pervaded by these uh, Upanishadic type statements. Shabda Brahmana vyaptavyam param brahmapadam ashnute prapnomi. I obtain that. I, as as uh, one of my colleagues just mentioned, that tadnyatva uh, tadevo uh, ano bhavati. He he becomes tadeva bhavati. One becomes Brahman who knows Brahman. When that occurs, immediately one is easily able to see one's own nature without delay. Sayana says, sa yada syat tadani meva swarupam drashtum sushakam bhavati paschad vilamba bhavat. One is immediately sees one's own nature without delay. So Sayana's summary is that when the first born of truth comes to one, that is when one recognizes one's identity with Brahman, then one attains a portion of this speech that is the meaning expressed by the passages that explain the unity of the self with Brahman or the state of Brahman pervaded by the highest stage of speech. My uh, a colleague uh, spoke of uh, the experience as described in the Yoga Sutras by Patanjali. Uh, yoga shchitta vritti nirodaha. Yoga is the cessation of the fluctuations of consciousness. And the state of kaivalya brought about through practice. It's a state beyond the highest state of knowledge. Okay, the highest state of knowledge is this ritam para But beyond that, tasyapi nirode, even when that ceases, sarva nirodat nirbija samadhi, one has the experience of seedless samadhi. That is, that is the absolute without any fluctuation of consciousness whatsoever. It says that having abandoned even that state of knowledge, and the destruction of the faults and the seed, one, one has kaivalya. Now it's interesting, uh, it was mentioned that this is an experiential state and it's an experiential state that's, that's universal. It's ex experienced all over the world and not not unique to India, although unique, uh, India has the unique uh, uh, claim to having texts which describe it most clearly and most scientifically. But at the foundation of Judaism, in what is called the Shema, Shema means hear, listen, uh, is, is made this statement, Shema Yisrael Yahweh, Eloheinu Yahweh Echad. Now this Yahweh is taken to be a name of God and the name of God is taken to be sacred 
And so it's not spoken out loud. So all of the translators replace this with something else. So these are three translations I've given at top. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is the Lord is one. And this, this is the basis of the monotheistic religions. But what it's really saying, this Yahweh is not just a meaningless name of God. Yahweh means the one which is, the one who is. So what it's saying is, here, O Israel, what is is our God, what is is one. So it's asserting exactly what the Rig Veda asserted in the Ekam Sat passages, the one being. In fact, the words in Hebrew are probably the same exact words. This uh, uh, Yahweh Echad. The Echad is, is Ekam, one. And Yahweh is the being. So the Ekam Sat is exactly this phrase, Yahweh Echad. So this is a universal experience, which is at the foundation of every religion, although religions have obscured it with their limited understanding. In the Indian tradition, there's a very clear articulation of this experience in, in, the, in the Advaita Vedanta tradition and in the Yoga Shastra tradition, the, uh, the instruction in how to uh, bring oneself to that experience. Now, in uh, this, this experience is, uh, is one brought about by meditation. And here I show uh, what's called a unified field chart made at Maharshi International University in the physics department, showing the unity of, of the entire uh, realm of physical studies in the, what's called the unified field. And next to it, the unified field as experienced in a transcendental meditation in uh, what it may be also referred to as transcendental consciousness, pure consciousness, or in Sanskrit, the Turiyam, the fourth state of consciousness, besides waking, dreaming, and sleeping, as my colleague discussed. So this, this shows that it is in fact a reality and it is a scientific reality. And the uh, there there is quite a lot of bit of evidence emerging that the human mind has the ability to imbibe this state of consciousness as verified by uh, scientific research and personal experience of individuals all over the world. Now, what I've discussed today, uh, I just wanna mention that the Sanskrit library offers courses on this sort of thing. We have a number of continue educa education courses in particular, I want to point out that we uh, offer a course called Concepts of the Self in Classical Indian Philosophy, where I discuss these issues at length. And in this course, Creation, Mythology, and Enlightenment, discuss in particular how the passages which describe the creation in various Vedic literature and those that describe enlightenment in Vedic literature are mirror images of each other, showing that the experience of enlightenment comes to the same state, which is at the source of creation, as shown in, uh, in this uh, diagram, which I, this uh, chart, which I showed. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I look forward to conversing with you and my colleagues uh, after. Thank you, Dr. Shah.